that equation. And then with this equation, uh, <coughs> Verdian says, look, we have to solve this. It's no longer simple. We have to solve this differential equation right here if we want to know what the output intensity is. And so in order to do that, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all my terms that have I sub nu over to this side of the equation, and I'm going to move my dt over to that side of the equation. Excuse me, this should be a dz, not a dt. I'm going to move my dz over to this side of the equation. And, and then, essentially, to solve this, I'm just going to integrate this from i in to i out, and I'm going to integrate this from 0 to L, the length of my gain medium, where that's z equals 0, and this is z equal L over there. And, and when I go and do this integral, which is really pretty simple to do, I come out with an equation that looks like that, that essentially relates the input intensity and the output intensity to the line shape, which later on I'm going to set equal to 1, uh, the length of the gain cavity and the gain. And what I've done here is because now I'm considering not just the intensity going and coming out here, but the intensity that comes in, goes through the gain medium. I want to bounce off these mirrors, go back through the gain medium, and come back to the beginning again here. Um, I go through twice, and I'm putting a factor of 2 in here. And what Verdian then says is, look, in the steady state, we know that if we take this output intensity and start at this point and come through the cavity all the way around and come back to that point right there, that the intensity has to repeat itself. It has to be the same, although it may change some as it goes through here. In the steady state, it's not changing in time. It does have to repeat. And with that, uh, what he does is he says, look, we have another relationship between the intensity that comes out of the gain medium and the intensity that comes into the gain medium. And that's this survival probability inside the cavity that essentially what happens, and let's go through this again, is, is that the output intensity comes through, travels through space, loses a little bit at this mirror, loses a little bit in transmission here, gets some gain, loses some at this space, comes, loses some at that mirror, loses some, gains some, loses some, and gets back to the starting intensity, that the input intensity, where I started right here, back after one round trip, is a survival probability. The ratio between the, the starting intensity and the output intensity is essentially a survival probability. And in this cavity, the survival probability is just the reflectivities of the mirrors multiplied by the transmissions of the gain medium going in and out, as you saw in the in-class exercise the other day, as I go through this laser cavity. And I can take this ratio between I in and I out, where now I in is defined right there and I out is after one round trip, and plug this back into this equation. And when I do that, I come up with this differential equation here, which is given in section 9.2 of your textbook, I believe. And this essentially can be solved to relate the output intensity to the gain the survival probability that depends on all the loss mechanisms inside the cavity, both the transmission, the gain medium, other losses, reflectivities of the mirrors, and the saturation intensity. And this is a bitch to solve, and Verdian spends a lot of time in the later sections of 9.2 of the book looking at the, the low gain, the high loss, all these, these cases, um, and you can read those on your own. But the real case is that we are comparing the output intensity after one round trip to these things that are measurable, things that are known. And the, the other realization is the external intensity, I external, that actually comes out in this case is just 1 minus R1, which is the transmission of this mirror, and it's how much of this output light is then coupled out where we can use it externally to the laser. And if you set the derivative of I out as a function of R1 to 0 and solve for the maximum, you can calculate what the optimal cavity coupling is. Um, but it's much easier just to graph this using a program like MATLAB and avoid all the analytical expressions. And I've done that on the next slide here. So let's go and take a look at this. So what I've done is I've set this mirror to reflectivity of 99, 99% transmission at these faces. Um, I'm going to vary R1, and I'm just going to plot two things. I'm going to plot I external, what comes out of this laser, and I'm also going to look at the output intensity 
um, as I change some things. I've set in here my gain coefficient to be 0 0.002 inverse centimeters, the length of the gain medium to be 10 centimeters, and a saturation intensity of 10 to the fourth, which is a rather arbitrary number. And what I see as I plot R out, as R1 decreases from 50% at this extreme to 100% at this extreme, the internal efficiency or the internal intensity inside the laser starts to increase very, very rapidly. As I get more feedback, the intensity inside the cavity does increase. But look at what happens to my external intensity. It goes through a maximum here, and it says that for this gain, the maximum intensity I get out looks to be at a mirror reflectivity of something of R1 equal 0.93. And that's the good balance between coupling light out and sending light back. You'll notice that at a reflectivity of 70% right here, that things go negative. Well, this is just crap because you can't have negative intensity. And that says unless you have 70% reflectivity, the laser is going to go out. You're not going to get enough feedback to sustain operation. So this is really the threshold point of the laser where it really starts to turn on. Um, we can look again with this equation and, and look at the, the curves of the output as a function of the gain. If we were to pump it harder and give more gain, and you'll notice that a low gain of 0 0.001, our reflectivity is here about 95%. Here's our 93% reflectivity. And then if we up our gain to 0 0.004, you'll see that, that we're coupling a lot more power out. Notice you get an increase that's, that's nonlinear really in going from here and that, that you have less reflectivity as you get higher gain to operate your laser at the optimum power threshold. And Verdian, like I said, in chapter 9.2 looks at a lot of different cases of this, but one can derive this without all the derivatives just by looking at the curves and, and plotting these numerically, and I think that's a much better way to do it. And to end this, let me say that this is all assumed in the steady state, operating at the peak of the line shape, that g of nu is equal to 1, um, to really do this correctly, we have to write a set of complete differential equations that describe the entire laser, and that's what we're going to be doing next, is really looking at the laser as a complete system, writing differential equations and solving those for the whole thing, and that means we can get rid of the assumptions, get rid of the analytical math, and just let the computer do our work for us, but we've got to make sure we understand this uh, before we go to numerical simulations so we know our simulation results make sense.